The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Discover a world of advice. Join Matt Heiner, CEO of Net Wealth, as he chats to industry professionals and thought leaders on the latest technologies, business models, changing demographic patterns, and general trends impacting wealth management. Listen at netwealth.com.au forward slash between meetings. This ad is presented by Net Wealth Investments Limited and does not consider individual circumstances. Seek professional advice and read the relevant PDS to determine if Net Wealth is appropriate for you. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Today on the podcast, we've got a soft phone and telecommunications special with Michael Newman. So Michael runs Telesense, a business that's focused on helping you build a telecommunication system that's tailored to the needs of your practice, or at the very least, an audit of your current telecom stack. So I thought he'd be a great person to chat to about all the options we have out there when it comes to modern phone systems, video conferencing, SMS, basically all things telecoms. You know, tools like Zoom and Teams have come a really long way since COVID, but many businesses currently use a lot of these tools in isolation. I started by asking Michael what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. I actually have a old HD DVD DVD player. And no, I have a ton of HD DVDs that I bought from Blockbuster when they were selling them for yeah. $1 each. Wow. And most of them have still never been opened. Oh my gosh. Brand new. Far out. When was the last time you used it? Uh, 2020 when COVID was on. Okay. I was actually sitting there and did a bit of binging on things like, uh, the, I've got all the Rocky movies. I've yep. got a whole bunch of random things that you wouldn't, yeah, yep. normally watch Godfather part one, two, three, yeah, wow. all the things you need to see in high quality. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously it's a lot different now where you just get that. And we talk about analysis paralysis with technology options. But you get the same experience when you're on just one streaming platform when there's just endless scrolling of things to pick from and you're picking from a thumbnail. Like you're not even watching trailers, et cetera. So, um, yeah, sometimes there's there's a bit of nostalgia in going to a blockbuster, picking something and actually carrying through and watching the whole thing and then paying for it too when you go back. Um, amazing. And then moving into this, I'd say this decade – or maybe last sort of 12 or 18 months, are there maybe one or two cool ways that you're using AI, whether that's personally or in your business? We're using uh, Zoom's Revenue Accelerator. Okay. And we've actually set it up to mainly focus on the person that's presenting Mm -hmm. and different ways they're presenting and actually adjusting the way they're speaking and actually using it almost like a little mini coach. So we're not so much worried about what the customer's answering or how they're answering Mm -hmm. because I, I think the main focus is just that we always just present ourselves in the best way and then they get to make their mind up, but just using it to to make sure we are presenting the best way we can. Right. So you're trying to focus on what you can control. Exactly. Focusing on what we can control and, and just making sure that when we, we do present something, we present it in the most authentic but also controlled way and actually in a reasonable way yeah. rather than just the way that we think is the best. Yeah. So you're actually starting to use data and, yeah, that's it's a really cool – I've actually never heard of um, – or didn't know Zoom had that product – I assume it's it's is that in addition to or part of their sort of AI companion or is that yeah you know, it, it's in between it's in between their their you know unified communications platform right. and their contact center okay so it's kind of a middle ground so it's for the people that don't need you know this is how many calls came in and all that sort of stuff mm. uh, some recruitment companies have even started to use it right to actually monitor job interviews okay and then they can get there and go you know the person was speaking very quickly which could mean that they're not always being you know this da 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 da. da. So now they can almost get there and use AI as well, nice. even though it's called Revenue Accelerator to actually yeah. look at, you know, 
sentiment and and how the person is responding and why they're responding that way, and then it gives people a bit more, you know, yeah, a bit more information to golf. That's actually that is really cool. Um, and yeah, maybe Zoom should change the name of that product and maybe get a bit more take up from businesses that don't need to <laughs> use it for that purpose. That's awesome. Okay, I, so, hope, I hope I don't get anywhere in marketing trouble, but yeah, yeah exactly. No, I'm sure any plug for that um, sort of product would be appreciated by them. So yeah, today, Michael, thank you for being here. I wanted to chat to you about, I guess, modern phone or comm systems, and there's plenty to go around. So just for example, we've got uh, Microsoft Teams phone, Zoom phone, AirCall, 3CX, Ring Central. I mean, there's some businesses that still just use their mobiles, which I know is, is probably the case or a hangover from COVID lockdowns, which is now sort of three or four years ago. But I guess that's where yourself and TeleSense come in. So can you start by telling us a little bit about TeleSense and how you help businesses? So I started TeleSense in September 2019, mm -hmm. mainly because Australia is an interesting place where we've kind of got a lot of legacy technology and also new technology. Right. And what ended up happening was when we, even before we changed with COVID, but especially accelerating COVID, when people went from legacy to modern technology, they didn't cancel the legacy. They right. maintained the legacy with the new technology as well, especially when COVID happened and we had to do it really quickly. There was even acceleration on that. So there's all this legacy technology that's still paid for by people that aren't using it, or they're only using parts of that legacy technology and parts of the new technology. Whereas you merge the two together, yeah. you can actually get a unified platform, yeah. right? Which everyone says unified, 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 but everything is still segmented, the silo. For example, in Europe, mobile numbers are part of UCAS systems, phone systems, you know, Teams, Zoom, everything. Everything's in one. So your mobile calls that you have now are done through Zoom rather than on a personal mobile, which means you have one port where every bit of information, every bit of analytics, everything is brought into one platform. Yeah. Rather than having a mobile that's separate, rather than having a landline separate, rather than having meetings couple and separate, everything's within one. Okay. Which is what we're slowly moving towards here in Australia. Slowly, goodness. And then, I mean, let's talk about that migration from a legacy system to a soft phone. Is that a, is that a complicated process? I assume it depends on maybe the extent of your legacy system, maybe the size of the business, locations, et cetera. Can you talk about that process? It's more about understanding how they use it now right. and trying to, you know, replicate it, right, at first. Yep. A lot of people come in going, we can revolutionize, we can revolutionize. Most businesses don't want to hear that with their phone system. They want it to be replicated and improved, right? They don't want someone to come in and go, oh, you've used this phone in the warehouse for the past 15 years. Yep. We're going to give you a headset. That's not what they want. They they don't want the, the building to have a sharp change. They want people to get there and feel comfortable and use the technology. Right, So what they want is someone to come in and go, this is what you're using now, this is how you're using it. This product will best replicate it, but add these features. In a lower cost, it'll add these features, it'll be more redundant, and therefore your staff will continue to use it without any gray you know, changeover period or any you know, legacy hangover. You know, Everyone is, is sick and tired of these technology hangovers where things are just thrown at staff and say, oh, we're using now Slack, get off yep. to speed. Yep. We're now using... You know, bright HR, log in, make your, you know, so everyone now wants things to sort of be similar to what they had, but improved. So evolution rather than revolution kind of thing. Makes sense. And so, I mean, you've, you've touched on a few benefits there of, of consolidation and a unified platform. Are you, when you talk about a unified platform, are you also talking about things like web conferencing and even things like SMS and things like that? How are you sort of defining that unified system? Yeah, so some people, um, Microsoft Teams is a great example of okay. it, okay? Microsoft Teams isn't actually a phone system. It's, it's only an interface platform. It's a GUI, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's a graphic user interface. So when you actually put a phone system in it, you're just using an interface, okay? So all it is is just consolidating all these different systems into one thing, and you can use things like Burst SMS, you can use things like Zoom, and you can use things like GoToMeetings, and you can use all these like GoToWebinar. You can actually suck that into Teams, right? So your staff only have one interface, and that's where all their information goes. But Burst SMS will be their SMS platform. Go to Webinar will be the Webinar platform, and they can use Teams for internal chat. And what the the goal of that is is you have this one place where everyone knows to look for things, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it creates a streamline between information being brought into one system that can be shared around in that way. Uh -huh. So what you're saying there is even though you might be using 
one platform, say at Teams, for example, um, I mentioned before they've they've got their own phone product, but uh, Microsoft is is nice enough to open up the the floodgates when it comes to integrating with other tools. So you can build a solution that works for you, obviously with the help of someone like yourself or Telesense, and plug in those tools that you want to use or maybe you're already using from when you went down the COVID path of we need this tool, we need this tool, we need this tool, and then yeah. um, use that experience within the one system. Is that what you're sort it, of um, Exactly. And and there? when you when people start talking about things like um, you know, migrating things across, right? Yeah. That could be as simple as using Salesforce, right? So automatically logging a call to Salesforce. What type of call was it? That call can then institute Salesforce to go, okay, send them an email in one week. Do this, do this, right? So just by getting there and integrating things using, you know, um, as many, as less touch points as possible, you can create something that is reliable, you know, uh, malleable to the way you do things and also cut down on workflow. And by cutting down on workflow, you actually save money as well. So not only is there saving money by removing legacy platforms, but it's also removing legacy tasks that no longer need to be performed manually. Yeah. I think one example of that in financial services is the requirement of file notes. So if we have a conversation with a client, we're legally required to document that conversation. One example would be if that call is either recorded or you're using something like a co-pilot or Zooms, um, as you mentioned, that revenue, sorry, what was it? Revenue Accelerator. Revenue Accelerator. Revenue Accelerator or their sort of AI buddy there. One example would be that call is recorded, that transcript is then posted into that CRM, whether it's connected. And if there's AI attached to that uh, tool, you can then get a summary of that conversation as well as action items. And there's probably 80 or 90% of that work that you would have previously done manually done there for you yes so one of our legal clients used a product called dial okay? okay and in its contact center it's had what's called battle cards okay so when a objection is put up it'll actually say what this objection could mean and how to respond to it so they've actually instituted in a um a law firm where people to explain documents to clients lots of stuff if, it, if they're minor documents can go to paralegals and they can you know run clients through documents if a client says what is this it actually has battle cards it'll say oh, this term can mean this, right? So rather than having people that are highly, highly educated, they can have people that have AI that actually helps them along with little bits of knowledge. So almost like little Google searches that will pop up based on the conversation that's going on. And they're called battle cards. So they can actually use that to, you know, brief themselves while they're being, you know, talking to the customer as to what they're actually talking about. So what you're, so. What you're saying there is like, instead of having all the help after the fact, it's actually starting to help you as soon as the issue is raised and yeah. Exactly. So in financial services, you could have a program so that uh, there's battle cards on all the credit cards. So if you work for Amex and they said, why do I need a platinum card if I can get a Qantas frequent flyer card and it's $500 a month cheaper? The battle card could actually list the features, the difference between a platinum card and a thing. If you can actually, you know, train yeah. it to do that, it could actually do that. So what you mean is you get single call resolution, but you also get a better outcome. So that's one yeah. of the ways you can use this, you know, AI technology and also just, you know, unification of technology mm -hmm. to get there and see this information come in and actually, you know, provide it with a different result. That's really cool. I'm already getting carried away with with um, AI and like I've sort of just jumped from in this conversation from implementing a modern comm system to using with AI in that modern comm system that you've just implemented. But maybe a practical uh, implementation of that would be say in the first six months of, of having a modern phone and, and maybe all of your calls or you mandate that across the business that calls are recorded, you could then analyze the types of questions that clients or prospects are asking, turn those into the, as you refer to them as battle cards, I think, or maybe um, little um, bite-sized bits of information and then create your FAQ based on that rather than doing the heavy lifting of I got this question seven times today, whether that's anecdotally or subjectively or just by opinion, but actually create those responses from exactly. Data. And it comes down to starting starting with what similar to what they had at the start, right? Replicating what they had at the start. If the lawyer still wants a phone on his desk, he can still have a phone yeah. on his desk, right? And then moving them along on a journey, right? And that's one of the strengths that's kind of helped us, you know, be successful as a company is we can take them on a journey almost like this is where you'll start and this is where you'll end. It's not we're just going to change gears, 
and we'll all go along on a nice little roller coaster ride. It is, this is where we'll start. On day one, it will look like the old system, and then we'll build it out over time. Nice. So just um, I'm, I'm jumping around a bit, definitely, with all the excitement around AI, et cetera. In terms of that migration period, so say, for example, you've still got that legacy system where you might even be moving from from one um, smart system to another just based on what your business needs. I'm sure you've come across that uh, maybe purely from a cost perspective in terms of bundling that in. Do you have, like, is there a modern way to port numbers now, like that sort of thing where clients are still seeing that or having that consistent experience on their end where they call the same number and it's the same experience or how does that sort of porting experience work? Porting when I started in 2015, 2016 was still PSTN, ISDN and that sort of thing, which were physical infrastructure, right? It actually right. required manual changes. These days, there is no physical infrastructure. All those okay. lines are removed. So these days, porting normally takes two to three weeks, okay? And that is a process of, you know, applying to the carrier and all that sort of stuff, right? These days, a lot of the time you can do what's called, you know, uh, running things in parallel, right? Which means that for a period, we will get there maybe two days where we'll push the numbers into the new system, okay? And then the new system will go out by the new numbers until we do a physical complete changeover and then have the old system running for a week in the background just in case anything goes wrong. It really depends on how much the client wants to spend and what their risk profile is, okay? So, for example, we have an Indigenous health client in the Northern Territory. They are still paying for their ADSL lines and they refuse to cancel them just in case, because I'll never be able to get them back. Now, that is because they have a low risk profile, right? They do not want any risk because to get anyone out there is extremely hard. So they'd much rather pay for services that aren't being used now, just in case one day that they are required. Yeah. We have another client who is based in the center of the CBD. Most of the staff use mobiles, and a lot of staff have changed over time. And he just said, press the button everyone's mobile's off, find out who actually gets there in the office that day says so a problem, and then we'll turn them back on, right? So it just depends on risk profiles as to which one, you know, which angle you take. Nice. No, that's that's really cool. And then, I mean, it depends on the provider, but once you've now got that set up, you can then configure it really easily too, I guess depending on the provider, but you can configure it to how your business operates. So, for example... In our business, we use Zoom phone. We've been using it for maybe four or five years. Um, and it's it's quite a – sorry, it probably – it used to be a lot simpler. But then as Zoom has sort of morphed into that unified communications platform, the amount of options and the, the admin or the setup options as you delve into the back end of Zoom has just exploded and changed and there's toggles everywhere and tick boxes and like it, it can take a lot of time to – make a simple change. I guess my question is what is like what do you see as like when when you see a, a current customer, they might have the current platform or they might be thinking about another platform, do you have a go-to provider, one that you enjoy working with the most or one that tends to tick the box most of the time or is it really objective from the start? Look, it comes down to what the customer needs, wants and desires, right? So yeah. If you just mentioned how you can now go into the back end and actually adjust, you know, settings and that sort of stuff. You know, uh, one of the providers go to has a visual call flow manager, right? Okay. And that really wows people because when there's multiple sites and multiple people have input, that means that they can easily get there and go, you want to go in and change something? This is how you do it. Go for gold, right? So if this, for companies or for non-profit organizations or whatever that have a lot of managers that train, you know, control little areas that have a lot of autonomy, Something like that is pure gold, right? So if you speak to them and you find that out as part of your research, they're a great customer for go-to, right? Um, you mentioned Zoom Phone. Zoom Phone, for going from a analog system into Zoom, it's like getting into a warm bar, right? It's very comfortable for customers. So it's a great product for customers that have, you know, that say, we're really worried about change management and everything else. Because Zoom, you already use in your day-to-day -day life. You've already called your grandmother off it. She's already called you know, nieces and nephews, God knows where in the world. So it's not scary. If you get there and say, I'm going to put you on a Ring Central, that's scary. They don't know what Ring Central is. They don't know what color the logo is. And it's a huge company, but they just don't know. It's scary, right? Even going into Teams, it's scary. It's something new. Zoom feels warm. Whereas if a customer gets there and goes, I want really, you know, I really want to impress my board or we, we really want something that are going to drive analytics and all this sort of stuff, 
you can put them into a dial pad as well, right? And dial pad has some amazing analytics and it comes out of the box and it's very easy. And that's the one we're talking about with battle cards. And just to get there and have something like that, that will also create a, if it's a company that really wants to embrace change, dial pad can be a great fit because it's got so many amazing features and a lot of it's powered by Google AI. So okay. if they want to talk about AI and all that sort of stuff, it is, you know, Google AI, it's a fantastic product. Uh-huh. So that's really interesting. So, for example, can a dial pad be integrated into like a Teams or or where you're currently doing your work, or is it a so, separate system? Yeah, so you can yeah you can put it into Teams. You can run it as a separate system, right? And by putting it into Teams, you can either do it in two ways. You can either do it as what's called an applet, and an applet means that it sits within Teams as a, as an app, okay? And you don't pay Microsoft for the privilege to do so, or right. you can use it as a Microsoft calling function on the actual right. uh, Teams platform. But then you have to pay Microsoft a license fee for that. So Microsoft will charge you for the privilege of using the little call button. So yeah. Microsoft doesn't provide a phone system. It just provides the graphical interface of a phone system. The problem with doing that with all these features, you know, with Zoom, you can do it. You can do it with Dialpad. You can do it with GoTo. You can do it with Ring Central. When you do that, though, you lose all these great features that these people have built yeah. because you're actually limited to this little box that just gets there and says, this is how you work, and this is all you do. So that's where, you know, it, it's about questioning why we why you got into Teams in the first place and why did you get all these features in the first place and you're just going to remove them. So okay. that's where there's a lot of little conversations. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I think you've really opened my eyes to um, just the intricacies of Teams and, and the, the phone uh, sort of abilities or non-abilities. So, and what you're sort of alluding to there is, Maybe there's a square peg ground hole arrangement with with some of the um, heavy hitting tools like Dialpad, where you, then you're pushing maybe ten percent of the functionality into what Teams currently offers in terms of their. I mean, you call it integration, basically. Yeah. So I mentioned our Northern Territory Indigenous Health Client. Yeah. They have to use WebEx because that's what all the government clients use, and that's what all their equipment is. So we currently have them running Zoom for their desk phones and Zoom phone for their uh, UCAS environment entirely to work mm-hmm. remarkably well. So that's perfect. But they've now integrated as an applet in Teams. So Zoom sits as an applet within Teams for their phone system. But WebEx sits behind Teams to power all their meetings because as a government organization, all their meetings are in WebEx. So now WebEx is their meetings function within Teams and Zoom is their phone system within Teams. So they're using Teams, but realistically using none of the functions of Teams other than mm-hmm. chat and to bring all this into one, one uh, exact place. Wow. So Teams is essentially like the puppet that's sort of pulling the strings in the front end. So Teams is a Windows within Windows, essentially, uh-huh. right? So when you first got Windows 3.1, the big thing was it brings everything into one. But right. now what they've done is basically brought a Windows within Windows. Nice. No, that's um, that's good intel. Okay. Amazing. And then and now that we've implemented a soft phone, depending on what provider it is, I mean – What's the sort of – I know you can't give a exact figure because it depends on the business and essentially the system you buy and they've all got their own bundles, et cetera. But what should a business expect expect to spend per head on, say, a soft phone system? You're looking around $20 per user for the very okay. basic, you know, normal features that 95% of businesses will want, right? You can then expand on that to get there and go, if you spend $180 a month, you will now remove – a key person that's sitting there doing transcription or, you know, for example, you're talking about Zoom phone, they can now get there at the end of a call and actually drop in a pre-written email that will say everything you spoke about on that call and next steps, right? So if you have someone that is using a PA to actually, you know, write the next steps email from them or whatever, you can actually use that as a function to lower that workload. Yeah. So it really depends on what industry they're in, what features they want, what you're actually replacing, what you're going with, how you use it. And that's why when people get there and go, change over your phone system, it's this much per user, and that's it. You know, like we can do it in five minutes. It never works as well, and it's never a long-term relationship because it's not uh, fitted to them, right? It's like a T-shirt from Kmart rather than actually going to, you know, somewhere somewhere that actually makes the shirt custom to you. Yeah. No, very interesting. Thank you for that. So, Michael, I'd love to use this opportunity to – Maybe do a analysis of our um, comms tech stack. Pull maybe pull that apart, and maybe you can give us some tips and tricks on on our scenario. I'm sure 
our sort of business scenario isn't too uncommon or there might be other businesses that, that have a, a similar setup. But we, as I mentioned previously, we use Zoom phone. So we've actually seen a very big drop off on sort of Zoom meetings because of we are using that Teams environment as well. So when I say Zoom meetings, I'm talking about client meetings with advisors, et cetera. So we use Zoom phone. We've got probably 10 or 15 users that are on like their unlimited calling plan. So there's no risk of sort of overages and that sort of thing. We use Teams for our all of our internal comms and internal meetings. And as I said, we're, we're growing when it comes to having client meetings in Teams as well. And this may not be as, as relevant for, for other businesses, but we do use Salesforce where we've got the Zoom sort of soft phone embedded in there. It's actually their legacy Salesforce app, so it's not that crash hot. But so we've essentially got three three touch points there of, of where there's file notes and um, you know wrapping up calls and and you know logging logging calls and three uh, ways of communicating. But where would you sort of start in that sort of communi- uh, that conversation on on a where to from there in terms of maybe consolidating that platform or those platforms? Or, yeah, where would you start with that? So the first big thing is what is the main functionality that you use the Zoom phone for? Yeah. Okay. So if you use it as basically just a dial, okay, what we would look at is go, do we just put it as a applet within Teams, right? That way we keep full functionality. We can see presence and all those sort of fun things that you currently see. And if you do a lot of transferring, presence and those things can be important. And the yep. way you transfer as well. By keeping it as an applet within Teams, we can choose whether we do a transfer as a warm transfer or a immediate transfer. Once yep. we move it into um, Teams, it's an immediate transfer. Okay, so we lose all that functionality. So also some of those little, um, you might have turned on the transcription, live transcription, where it actually transcribes a call live. By moving that into Teams, instead of having it just as an applet, moving into full-time team, you lose that. So it depends on whether you're losing those features is important to you or just having a streamlined UI that people are looking at is important to you. Now, you mentioned Salesforce. Now, it depends on whether you're a classic or lightning. There's two different types of Salesforce, yeah. but I'm not a Salesforce salesman, so I'll skip that as a yeah. topic. But you can get there and use the AI that's open available within Salesforce to actually link it to your uh, Zoom as well, okay, using the sandbox which means that you can use the basic functionality that comes as part of that dialer. Or if there are specific features you want to do, you can actually get there and link that to Zoom in the back end as well. So for example, if you wanted to get there and put a, a drop-down box within Salesforce that sent the customer an SMS with a link to the Teams meeting or, sale, or Zoom meeting, you could actually do that within uh, Salesforce using the Zoom phone that actually has an SMS function on it. So what that means is, you can now get there and instead of having a mobile phone that you might be using on your desk, you can bring that into Salesforce that then sends that number out via Zoom phone. So it's all reportable within one streamlined thing. Because a lot of people sitting at their desks now have yeah. mobile phones. They use SMS, those sort of things. You can bring all that into one interface. So therefore, that SMS is now logged in Salesforce and it was set up via Zoom phone. So if we go to the back end of Zoom, we can search for that SMS and find that there as well. Nice. So we can do those sort of things while putting it in teams and actually looking at what what are our four competencies and how do we want to streamline this all down and how do we want to make things reportable? You know, yeah. as you were saying before, there's a lot of notes required for financial services, keeping of records. If those are all on the mobile phone, the SMSs, and that's the way you're communicating with a client, how are you storing that? How are you backing it up? And this is also a compliance piece to get there and move it all into Salesforce and have it there as, you know, file notes, as you said. And yeah, just a, a clean client record or a one place of where all the communication is happening. I mean, I even forgot to mention that we do use uh, another um, tool for SMS called Twilio, which is integrated um, 100% into mm. our Salesforce instance. But even as you alluded to before, Zoom has that offering too. So th- there is just yeah a lot of consolidation opportunities. So yeah, and this I is mean, where just talking about how how the business works will all often open up much more conversations oh, about definitely. okay. So we need this for why we need this for X, and by we can't get rid of that because it's the way the business has always worked. Whereas people that get there and go, we're going to come in and revolutionize the business, and you're going to get rid of all this, and you're just going to have this. It's always problematic and it's always painful. Whereas if you can try and understand why they have things and replicate it or keep it, you know, 
Oh, definitely. Most and quite. the worst thing you can do is you can solve um, 10 problems and maybe leave one piece of existing functionality that is no longer possible. So you've essentially made all these new things happen, but the one thing that someone valued before is now gone. Like that's an easy way to piss people off or piss team members off. Um, and it would not be uncommon for a lot of financial planning or financial services businesses to be using an external tool that they're logging into to send SMSs. So the company might have an SMS number and they're sending out um, SMS. The reason why I love Twilio is because we have one number. So the, there is one number tied to this business and it's two-way so clients can reply. But I know there's lots of tools out there where you're only able to send uh, the message to the client. They can't respond. And it might come from a random number each time. You've even got tools like, oh, I'm now extrapolating even further. You've got tools where Zoom now has essentially a Calendly alternative or a Microsoft Bookings alternative. So when we talk about unified uh, comms platforms, it's even taking it one step, um, not one step further, but it's even taking it to before the comms is even involved. So you're actually scheduling that call using that same platform as well. Have you had any experience with using those sort of meeting booking or scheduling tools as well in those platforms now? Yeah, we we use um, a you know we use Calendly previously, and we've we've used the Microsoft uh, Book Me tool, Book Me Now tool. Yeah. I forget what it's called, uh, Microsoft yeah. Reservations. But I think the big change that's happened in the past six to nine to twelve months is the fact that everyone's now looked at things to say rather than we are one and just give everything to us. Everyone is playing ball with one another, right? Zoom now integrates really well with Slack and Twilio and yep. all these other functions as well. And and even Teams has kind of opened up floodgates to go, nice. if you're good at that, bring it in, right? We'll work with you. Come on, let's go. And I think the thing is that everyone is kind of seeing, you know, that people want choice. They almost want, you know, everyone wants choice. And, and to try and streamline people down is just slowing down the process and sales and money in. By opening up the floodgates, they get people to use their products and hopefully convert them rather than getting there going, you know, no, nope, our way is the best way, take it or leave it. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. I also think that it's the there there is that the change management and leaving or the there's sorry, there's the there is a, a preconception that it is very difficult to pick up from your existing tech and move it across, especially when it comes to video conferencing and uh, comms, etc., or soft phone, like especially if you're changing numbers or porting them and there's a two- or three-week period. But if they can be all open and play nicely with, with each other, it means you're less likely to churn away from that business because there's I, less I think the different. Run. I think the difference is, right, that in the past two to three years, information, at least in the last two, three years, if not more, information is a lot more readily available, right? Yeah. I can now... Google, soft phone, UCAS, mm. I'm going to have all five providers' prices, right? Yep. Back in the days of selling the boxes of Avaya, Samsung, and all that, you had to go to a guy who would get a price book, and he could tell you it was $10,000. You get another guy to tell you it's $8,000. This guy tell you it's yep. $20,000. Whereas now, right. it's it's very easy to find out all this information, right? Yep. The phones you have on your desk now are not branded, a certain brand yep. anymore. They're generic, yep. right? Which means I can go onto Alibaba, I can go onto, you know, any of those sort of sites, and I can type in Yealink T53, mm-hmm. and these phones aren't costing me five six hundred dollars anymore. They're costing me one hundred and thirty. Yeah, and it's simply because you can, you can find out. So you can get the phone; it's essentially uh, un- unlocked, and then you can um, you can plug in whatever tool you want on the background as well. Essentially, so yes. Cool. Essentially, now what you can do is just move them from system A to system B. Simply by pressing big button, holding it down for three seconds, and then you're ready to go. Yeah. And what I've found as well is, uh, I keep talking about our business, but we have, or previously we had everyone with a desk phone. So that was because that was the only way that everyone knew and that's how everyone communicated was with that physical phone on their desk. This is pre-COVID. When we implemented Zoom phone, it obviously opened up another way or another door for something to ring. So now, you've, now your computer's ringing rather than your actual desk phone. What we found was people were uh, happy to consolidate and said, you know, let's take the desk phone away from my desk. I can free up space. But we still have maybe several team members where they want both. 
so they're still comfortable with or used to the picking up the phone and and using that physical experience and also just that sort of muscle memory of of it actually physically ringing as well so you've you've got basically even though you might implement that one way in your business even multiple team members can do it in their own way as well that works for them but it's oddly satisfying when you actually slam down a real phone it's not all that right. satisfying when you get there and move your mouse and but especially when we implemented zoom phone we found that people will ask for a desk phone and it does migrate off the desk. It takes about four to five months for it to migrate off the desk, but it's up once again, you know, evolution rather than revolution. Whereas if you try and push them too quickly into the system, they will push back. Yep, definitely. No, and, and by migrate, you mean someone saying, get this off my desk. I don't need it anymore. It's a physical migration. Of, Essentially, you know, and, but that's their it. choice. Yep. It's, they're not forced to do it. It's their choice. Yep. So they almost feel empowered when they get there and say, I don't need this anymore. It's almost a bragging right rather than, no, I want this damn thing, leave it there. Nice. And then just um, sort of going back to AI, we mentioned the the revenue accelerator before. Are you seeing uh, sort of when it comes to an inbound call maybe from a client or someone external into a business, like early stage AI where that's being able to be routed in a more smart way rather than press zero for find your planning, press one. For oh, definitely. Time. Where, you know, and there's even ones that are, you know, they all pick up where they're on the website and tell the customer before they call the number that they're up to here on the website. When they put people on, you know, hold, how heavy are they breathing? So it's one of those little things you might know, but Big Brother's always watching, right? Okay. So how heavy are they breathing will almost give you an incentive to say, these people are not happy when they're, you know, Coming off the so cold and all that sort of stuff. You know? sent- sentiment is getting that advance where it's it's not even picking up on words, it's picking up on uh, the amount of um, feedback that's coming into the, the microphone. Exactly, right? So you can get there and go into as deeply as you like. I mean, some people for many, many years have used fun music on hold to make people more relaxed. So actually something mildly comedic, right, can make right. people feel more relaxed. You might not realize this, but they used to play November Rain and that sort of stuff on, on hold music because it's so long and the song goes up and down and you don't feel like you've been on hold for 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to Aqua's Barbie Girl, it only goes for two minutes and 40 seconds. So if you hear that nine times, you're going to feel like you're on hold for a very long time as opposed to one November rain. So they've yeah. been tricking you for years, right? They've been tricking you for years. You just didn't realize they were tricking you. Now they're using more advanced means to do it. So years ago, we actually did a study for a client to find out how long until people hung up. They were a charity. People were ringing up to cancel. So they yeah. tried to find out how long people would hold on before they gave up the, you know, the goat and go, I'll try and call back another day. So we found it was about 13 minutes. But the people that go past 13 minutes, they'll hold on for an hour, right? They're committed. Right. So the once you hit no that return. 13 minutes, you were using you were using resources, right? Because at that time you had phone lines. So once you got to 13 minutes, it was quicker to deal with them. But you almost made people wait to push them out. Whether that's highly ethical, and I won't name the charity, but that was part of the the, the, the scope, that's right? We can only provide okay. information. Oh but that meant that they lowered their churn rate because people would go up, sign up on the street, move on, and then the next day they go, I don't really want to give this monthly donation to the thing. I'll ring up and cancel it. And then they'd wait right. 13 minutes. They'd wait another month. They'd get debited again. They'd call back up, and the journey goes on. I think Centrelink has that same strategy, Michael. Um, they're not playing Barbie Girl, but jeepers. Okay. Um, this has I been a very- I recommend it to them. Might, they might get there and actually, you know, <laughs> change, change, some of their, change some of the call responses that um get to. Exactly. They'd be a big client to land. Um, Michael, thank you so much for, for joining us on the soft phone or unified comm special. That doesn't quite roll off the tongue as nicely as soft phone special. But yeah, thank you so much for your time. What's the best way for someone to get in touch with you or TeleSense to sort of take things further? Uh, if they reach out to sales at tele-sense.com.au, that we're always available there, or yep. just um, give us a quick call. The number's on the website, tele-sense.com.au. Beautiful. And I yeah, can't wait to hear what hold music you've got or whether you're on hold at all, getting through to the sales number of your business. Be a good uh, place to start. Very wide. Nice. Kind of fun. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate your time. No worries, thanks.